So Animal Crossing New Horizons has been out for a month now and holy shit, it's amazing. I've been anticipating this title for a while, pretty much ever since the Switch came out. I've always been a huge fan of the series. I mean, I even played Amiibo Festival. I even played Amiibo Festival. But yeah, I've been looking forward to this game ever since it was announced, and I'm both happy and honestly surprised to say that it's lived up to every one of my expectations. Animal Crossing is one of those series that for me just gets definitively better with every entry. When I played the original on GameCube as a kid, I absolutely loved it, but now it's almost painful to go back to it. Like, remember mailing each individual fossil to get it assessed? And the same goes with every other game in the series, although I wouldn't really consider that a fault of the games and more of a testament to how strong the series is, that each new entry in the series improves on the last game so much that it's almost impossible to go back. And to commemorate this one month anniversary of the game, I thought, what better than to go over my past month of the game and give my general thoughts on it. To start off, I've already put an ungodly amount of time into the game, although some of my other friends' playtimes are still making me unsure of if I'm putting in, frankly, enough time. The first day I got the game, I did all the first day tutorial stuff of setting up your rickety tent and clearing out the weeds from the first section of your island that you're given access to. And since I couldn't really do anything else but fish and catch bugs for the rest of the day, that's all I did. And while I was overjoyed when I got the crafting recipes for the stronger tools on that first day, they required iron nuggets to craft, which you don't really get on your first day. So while it probably would have been healthier to just stop playing and wait to get those stronger materials, I didn't, and just spent 12 hours straight breaking flimsy rods. Also, since the museum doesn't open on the first day, I just took to piling up all my fish and bugs outside my house on the museum plot, which I was happy to find out that I wasn't alone in doing. So yeah, first day, super fun. Day two. Tom Nook told me about mail existing and the museum open, which, oh my god, Blathers, I've missed you. Overjoyed, I brought all my donations over, and Blathers only accepted, like, a few. Are you kidding me? However, Blathers did give me the recipe for the vaulting pole, opening up more sections of the island, so I guess I can't be completely mad at him. And despite having just complained about it, I will say the progression is something I actually quite enjoyed in this game. I appreciated how everything was slowly unlocked through your first day's playing. You get the vaulting pole in your second day, allowing you to hop over the river and explore the other half of your island, and you get the ladder on the next day, allowing you to climb up the cliffs and explore further. And although it was frustrating waiting for the museum to fully unlock so that you could donate everything that had been piling up to that point, when it did finally unlock and you got to fully explore that gorgeously designed museum with all your donations there to fill it up, it was magical. That first week of Animal Crossing will honestly go down as one of my most memorable gaming experiences just due to the daily progression. Every day I was so excited to wake up and see what was new on my island. I know the idea of a game slowly doling out features on a real-time daily basis may not sound that appealing, but I think it does a great job at settling the player into how the game's intended to be played, short spurts on a daily basis. Which still doesn't stop me from binging it for hours on end, but in the long run, this game's meant to be a regular installment in your daily routine. Now that I've gushed about this game enough, I'll move on to something I have a few gripes with, and it's the online. To start off, the online here is definitely an improvement over the previous games in that it's much easier to visit friends and there's more to do when you do visit, like catch bugs and fish together. However, it ain't perfect. Having someone visit your island can be absolutely painful. Whenever someone does, everybody's forced to exit whatever conversation or transaction they were in to sit and watch a long loading screen before they're allowed to move around again. And while that's easier to overlook when you have one person over, whenever you get multiple people to visit your island and are all forced to sit through multiple instances of that same loading screen, it just isn't fun. Beyond that, visiting and playing with friends was pretty fun, although there wasn't much to do. It was awesome visiting their islands, seeing how they decorated their house and town, fishing, trading materials and recipes, and collectively beating up the ugly villagers. But it would have been cool to have some multiplayer games to play with friends. Some people smarter than me have already come up with their own games to play together, and I'm sure even more will pop up as time goes on, but it would have been awesome to have some programmed in, like, remember the island tours from New Leaf? Stuff like that would have been perfect to play with friends here. Also, mail. Like, I cannot believe it took this long for us to be able to send mail to other people not in our village, but dear lord, I'm so grateful that it's finally here. Alright, now time to talk about arguably the biggest addition of this game, the crafting, which in my opinion was implemented great in some ways and not so much in others. Back at E3 last year, which, <laughs> rip. But back when I was watching Nintendo's New Horizons trailer on that Direct, and I saw that crafting for the first time, I was scared. I was so, so scared, because when I think crafting, I think of games which I 
do not like. However, I am happy to report that New Horizons crafting was not nearly as bad as I was expecting it to be. What made me hate games like Rust and Grav were its gameplay loops, which revolved around collecting recipes to craft items, and Animal Crossing has that exact same loop. The difference is in Rust and Grav, those recipes dropped randomly and it was necessary to find recipes for better weapons and equipment so that you wouldn't die and lose everything. But in New Horizons, all the essential recipes for tools can be bought at the store. Everything else is just non-essential stuff like furniture and wallpaper. Unlike Rust and Grav, I'm not going to die if I don't get the recipe for a lock bench. That laid-back nature extends even further. If I get a recipe for something my friend wants, I could just craft it for them and mail it over, or they could do the same for me. That being said, the crafting ain't perfect. Now by this point, everybody on the internet's already said it. There's an equally confusing omission, like the inability to craft or consume more than one item at a time. If there's one obvious thing missing from Animal Cross, it's the ability to craft more than one thing at a time. While we're on the subject, let me craft multiple items at once, let me craft any required items automatically if I have the materials you also can't bulk craft. Who the hell decided to implement a crafting system where you can make tons of fish bait and then said no, you have to make them one at a time. There's one major patch the game needs yesterday and it is, say it with me now loud enough so maybe Nintendo can hear, bulk crafting. But I'll just say it, why does the Gundam cost 10 gold nuggets to craft? And on top of that, it requires gold armor, which requires 8 gold nuggets to craft, and I need 30 rusted parts, which I can only get when Gulliver decides to randomly die on my beach? Why? I'm never gonna get all that. Uh, but yeah, um, bolt crafting, uh, that'd be very nice. Alright, now that crafting's out of the way, I can move on to- what was next again? No. No. No! Bunny day was hell. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. But seriously, why were these eggs absolutely everywhere? I mean, I'm glad Nintendo put out that patch which lowered the egg rate, but it still wasn't enough. When I first saw Bunny Day in that direct, I was pretty excited. Compared to previous holiday events in the series where you pretty much did everything you could on the first day, the concept of collecting various eggs to craft the seasonal furniture seemed promising. But then it wasn't. It doesn't help that the Bunny Day furniture is really ugly, which didn't really make crafting it all that rewarding. The clothing also looks pretty bad, and I hated that they made all my villagers wear them. All of that and the fact that this came a week and a half after the game came out, like everyone was having the time of their lives finally getting to play New Horizons. Then everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. And also, why on earth did the Cherry Blossom event and Fishing Tourney have to happen during Bunny Day 2? The Cherry Blossoms were so pretty, its furniture line was great too, and collecting Cherry Blossoms was super simple, just catch them in the net, and it didn't get in the way of me trying to do other stuff, unlike those dumb eggs. And why would you host a Fishing Tourney where you're timed on how many fish you can catch in 3 minutes when there's all these goddamn eggs in the water? Nintendo, please in the future, more seasonal events like this? And not like this. Please. I'm begging you. I'm done ranting. For now, I just want to talk about my villagers. They're a central part of this game, and since there was this trend a while ago with ranking your town's villagers, I think it's the perfect time for me to belatedly hop on this bandwagon and rank mine. And for the sake of entertainment, I'm going to start at the top and go down. Number one, Hopper, my special, lovable, grumpy old penguin. I love that he's based off my favorite species of penguin, rock hoppers. I love that his house is decorated like Antarctica. He always compliments my clothing even though I have no clue as to how to dress. And if you didn't think I cared about Hopper enough, I force him onto my island. This is the only amiibo card I own. When I first scanned him in, I bugged him until he wanted a bonfire, which for you Hopper, I would do anything. And then he gave me a pair of funny glasses, which I will treasure. Forever. Number two, Stitches. I actually got Stitches by chance, and it's the best luck I've ever had because he's just so adorable. He gives me the most recipes out of anyone else, and even though he doesn't go outside often, he's always so excited whenever I visit him. Number three, Sprinkle. Sprinkle grew on me. At first, I wasn't sure if I'd like her personality, but she's just always so bubbly and excited for everything, and whenever she gives me a recipe, she always says she got the idea from watching TV, which, I mean, I, I can relate to. Number four, Kiki. Every single interaction I have with Kiki is just so wholesome. She's so polite, and whenever I visit her, she apologizes for not having any apple pie or food ready for me. Like, oh my god, no, you don't, you don't need to make me food, and that's... It's too nice. Number five, Hornsby. Hornsby is a gentle giant. Sometimes if I talk to him too much, he gets low-key annoyed at me, but it's hard to get mad at him when he's always relaxing and smelling flowers and just being cute. Number six, Klaus. He's always so pompous whenever I talk to him, and 
Okay, I know he's Greek and that's his entire thing, but I got tired of seeing him in his dumb toga. But he does give me good recipes and he shares his name with a movie I really like, so I can't complain too much. Number seven, Flip. He always talks about working out and protein shakes, but I swear to God, his arms are like noodles. And I always see him singing, which sure that's a workout for your vocal cords technically, but not your muscles. And whenever there are other villagers working out in the plaza, he's never there. And finally, Number eight, Canberra. I hate her. She always looks angry, gives me recipes for items I already have. She always Naruto runs in my plaza and it's so annoying. The color scheme of her furniture in her house reminds me of the kitty furniture line, which I also hate. And she never contributes anything useful in our conversations. One time she told me Gulliver was sleeping and I should wake him up, but I already did. Canberra, why do you sit? And that does it for my villagers. I know I can still get two more to move in, but I'm waiting until I decide on a real layout for my island before I build any more houses, which I haven't done yet. Back when I started this game, I kept telling myself that I'd decide on how to design my island after I got terraforming and path creation. But after I got KK to perform my island and got terraforming and path creation, I still haven't decided how to design my island. So it's good to know that my chronic procrastination extends to Animal Crossing as well. And actually, I guess this would be a good time to give a tour of my unfinished island. To start off, when you enter my island from the airport, which by the way is named Fairboat as a reference to Vox Peak, great series, check it out if you haven't already, you're greeted by my mountain of tarantulas that I've caught and I'm waiting until Flick comes to my island so I can sell them and make like a million bells. When you get by that, you're greeted by my museum on the right and my town hall, and next to that, a small patch of my ugly custom design that I made that I just put on the ground when I was still playing around with the path creation tools and I never cleaned it up so it's just sitting there. Next up are the houses of Flip and Canberra and then mine. Right now I don't really have many decorations out since like I said I have no clue how I'm going to plan any of this out. I have this random rocket out here so I can easily change clothes and I guess since it was a rocket I thought it'd look right out here. Um, anyways, behind my house we have my cherry orchard and bamboo stalks, and above that we have my apple trees. To the right we have my orange trees and kiki stitches and hoppers houses, and then after we take the one and only ramp I've made so far, we have Hornsby and Sprinkles houses and the nook store. Below that is Klaus's house, my small grove of money trees and pears, and the campsite, which is like the one area I put any thought into decorating, and I'm quite proud of it. And that's it for the town. Nothing special really. Ah, but once you get into my house, it's a different story entirely. The main room is kind of just a smattering of random furniture that I put there without thinking. I have some leopard print flooring because I just thought it was goofy, and I have a collection of all the mesh hats hanging up top. My room in the back is supposed to be a kitchen, I just haven't set anything up so it's all just furniture haphazardly thrown on the ground. Um, moving on, my left room is another I don't know what I'm doing room in which I couldn't decide if I wanted it to be a bathroom or a bedroom, so it's both. And my right room is my Godzilla room. Don't ask why he's in a dump, I don't know either. And my upstairs I only got recently, so I didn't know what to do with it, so there's nothing in it but turnips since Nintendo decided we couldn't put them in storage for some reason. And that's about it. I don't have much set up yet, but I hope I eventually decide on an island design soon, because the most fun I'm getting out of this game is visiting my friends' islands and seeing how they have everything set up. This game was a game changer in that in previous games, whenever friends visited your town, the only thing you could really show off was your house, since the there wasn't much creative freedom in decorating outside past throwing patterns on the ground to make it look like you had pathways. But in this game, you can design everything. When you visit someone's island, you get to see how they design every single aspect. And it's made me much more motivated to play every single day than previous entries in the series have. And I guess if you want, you could delve into the ridiculous trading and selling market going on in the game's community like my girlfriend already has. <laughs> 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 oh my god! <laughs> you have this gated off area! <laughs> yeah! And the where- oh, sorry! For <laughs> training and visiting. I think this is hilarious. I love all the little improvements and touches they've made, from the decorating mode, to the different activities you'll see your villagers doing, to how Tom Nook and Isabel aren't just mindlessly waiting at the desk for you to arrive, but they're doing their own things. Somehow, a game about doing nothing but menial tasks has managed to capture me for a hundred hours. Somehow, 
this game made spending time clearing weeds and trees for my tarantula islands one of my most enjoyable gaming experiences of the year. So yeah, if you couldn't already tell, I'm really liking this game so far and I'm really excited to see what the rest of the year has to offer. This is a weird game in that you really can't experience everything that has to offer in just the first month. Like I said, this is a game you play daily for a long period of time. So to properly assess everything in this game, I'm gonna do a year long playthrough of it. I mean, I was always going to play this game for a year or even longer, but I figured what better than to just document my entire experience for this full year to really give a feel as to how Animal Crossing New Horizons is in its entirety. This is a huge game, and I really want to be able to explore every single facet of it, so I guess uh, the next check-in video on this will be coming up in a few months. Alright, well that just about does it for me. Um, I guess I'll see you guys in a few months when I decide to make another one of these, but for now, we'll get back to playing New Horizons, because I want to. It's a good game. I want to.